Yeah, so in order to get this gig, um, Adam, you'd need to be able to read piano vocal music handed to you by singers about two minutes before we hit. Well, I would first need to properly express my uh, vision of the Dionysian ideal um, in order to balance it against the Apollonian in my performance, uh, thus achieving uh, the primal unity. And yeah, so in the real world, nobody gives a shit about any of that. Can you do it or not? <laughs> So at some point in your bass playing career, you might be asked to play from piano sheet music. How exactly do you go about doing that? Okay, first things first, piano is played with two hands. Duh. But the only thing that you really care about whenever you're reading piano sheet music is what the left hand is doing, and that's the bottom stave, particularly the left hand's pinky finger, because that's the note that's playing the lowest note of the chord. Now, when you're actually reading normal bass sheet music, the important thing to remember is that bass sheet music is transposed up an octave, so that when we read this note, it sounds like this. But when you play that on piano, it sounds like this. And if you listen to this, this is actually an octave higher than this. <laughs> if I was to try and play on piano this note in the correct octave, it would sound like this. But the piano sheet music would actually read like this. What that tells you is that whenever you're playing piano sheet music, you're looking at the left hand, in other words, the bottom staff, but you're going to have to transpose everything up an octave from where it's written. A great way of practicing music up the octave from where it's written is to get your hands on some tuba sheet music. A good resource for that is imslp.org. It's a collection of all these classical music scores that have gone out of print, so go nuts, it's all legal. One of the biggest challenges when you're sight reading piano sheet music is to know exactly how much to play and how much not to play from what's written on the score. So your job really isn't just to sight read, but it's to also sight arrange, which represents a whole nother level of musical consciousness and musical awareness. There's a lot that goes into this, but here are a couple tips to help guide you in the right direction. One, play one note at a time. Very often piano left hand will be written in octaves just to sort of beef up the sound, but if you're playing a bass line on bass guitar in octaves, it can kind of sound a little bit muddy and it sounds a lot clearer and more precise and actually probably more idiomatic if you're just going to play single notes. So just keep it to single notes, guys. Two, don't play at the beginning of the song. This has uh, sort of a self-defense mechanism, one, because you want to be able to know what the style of the music is before you start playing, but also it's a good way of creating some dynamic interest later on in the song when you finally come in. Usually you would come in, I don't know, you generally sort of feel it out, but usually you'd come in on like the second verse. This is a good tip to use if you're playing with a drummer, especially if they're also reading off of piano sheet music. Three, focus on just the first note of a measure. On a lot of piano vocal scores, you'll have the left hand playing arpeggiations, um, and it gets a little bit too, I don't know, cute if you're gonna be playing all the notes of an arpeggiation along with the piano left hand. It's normally gonna sound a lot clearer and a lot better and a lot tighter and more controlled if you just focus on that first note and create a rhythm around that note. Four, drop out if the piano left hand is in the treble clef. Generally speaking, if the piano left hand is up there in the treble clef, it usually means a quieter section of music. And if you're trying to double some of those notes on the bass guitar in the higher register, it'll create kind of a dominating texture. And it sounds cool, but remember your job is to be a sight arranger, and most arrangers would kind of leave the bass guitar out up until the point where the piano left hand comes back in in the bass clef. Five, pay attention to editor mistakes. Now, very mercifully, a lot of piano scores come with chord symbols these days, uh, but a lot of the times the editors and the people that prepare the sheet music write wrong chord symbols. So use the chord symbols, but take them with a grain of salt and really pay attention for editor mistakes. It takes a certain sort of eye and certain sort of experience to understand what exactly is meant by piano vocal scores in relationship to bass guitar. But once you're able to get that skill, it makes you indispensable to a huge number of musicians who might want to hire you. A big advantage of reading piano sheet music is you're able to actually see the vocal line as it's going by while you're playing bass. It helps you more than you might realize, just as a reference point and also as a means of knowing when to come in and when to drop out. It also helps you immensely, God forbid, if you were ever to get lost. Last weekend I went to Philadelphia where I did a musical theater concert with some actors from Broadway doing Halloween themed music where I had to put all of this knowledge to the test. Normally this music director gives me amazing charts, but the performance was organized on extremely short notice so I had to read from piano vocal scores for a couple numbers and hope for the best. But I don't give a shit. Give her some 
Notice how I'm always looking over at the music director. The tempo shifts are very difficult to nail the first couple times that we run something, especially on something like this, where we basically literally just ran it once before we performed it. So it's good to have one eye on the music director and one eye on the sheet music. I sometimes rank gigs I play based upon the total number of beers that I can consume before I'm in any way impaired. And yeah, for these piano piano sheet music gigs, these are definitely zero beer gigs. Anyway, this has been Adam Neely's Bass Lessons. Uh, please comment, like, and subscribe, and also give me uh, any ideas you might have on any videos that you might want to see in the future. Um, and until next time, bass. A great way of practicing music up the octave from where it's written is to get your hands on some tuba sheet music. A great way of practicing music up the octave from where it's written is to get your hands on some tuba sheet music.